Hey guys, welcome back to Greg's Fish Room. Today we are doing something that I've been waiting for for months and months. We are moving the fish out to the greenhouse for the summer. So come along with me and learn how to be a better aquarist. Now, I know what you're thinking. Greg, it's been summer for a hot minute. Why aren't the fish outside already? Well, I've been pretty busy. But today, the greenhouse is in perfect shape. The fish room's in pretty good shape. And I have the time, finally, to collect all of these fish and bring them outside. What fish are going outside? Let's go take a quick look. All right, here is the first fish that is going out in the greenhouse. It is the white cloud mountain minnow. Now I've probably got two to three dozen adult fish in this aquarium and they've been in here all winter. These are actually fry that I raised up from last year out in the greenhouse. This was my test fish from last year. Uh, I basically threw them in an IBC tote in the greenhouse and I got hundreds and hundreds of babies and uh, these are the ones that I've kept indoors over the winter so this is the first species that's going back out in the greenhouse second species is the golden white cloud and there's other fish in here but you can definitely tell which ones are the golden white clouds um, it's essentially the same as the white cloud it's just a color morph so they've got that gold coloration and especially if you're viewing them from the top uh, you can definitely tell uh, that it's a whitish gold color so uh, they're going to require similar conditions to the white clouds and so they will be taking up a second ibc tote and then in this tank we actually have two species that are going out in the final two ibc totes there's the vietnamese white clouds uh, there's one right there a bunch of them are hiding They've got a slightly different fin shape. Uh, they're a little, oh, here they all are. Hiding over here. The Vietnamese white cloud. Um, similar, you know, conditions that they need out there in the IBC totes. They've got a slightly different fin shape, um, larger fins than the uh, regular white clouds. And then the final species is the rainbow shiner. There's one there. There's a few uh, back there in the corner. They're a little bit more elusive right now because I'm not feeding them, but they are in full breeding color. They are full size. All of these fish are adults. I've got between one to two to three dozen of each of these species. The rainbow shiners, the Vietnamese white clouds, the golden white clouds, and the regular white clouds. And I have four IBC totes outdoors in the greenhouse. so one species per tote let's get collecting all right and the product we're going to use today to collect all these fish is brand new new to me the aquarium co-op specimen container this is a rugged heavy duty specimen container and i'm going to be replacing my old tom's dip and pour uh, with these aquarium co-op specimen containers you can find the affiliate link down below if you'd like to pick them up. Um, it was time to upgrade, and I think you can see why. The Tom's Dip and Pour is quite a bit smaller. Um, it's scratched up from many years of use, and I finally run into the scenario where I need to upgrade the size of my specimen containers as well, especially when I'm collecting a lot of fish for all of these auctions that I'm going to, when I'm moving fish indoors and outdoors, it's really handy to have a larger size specimen container. You can fit more fish in it, you can fit larger fish bags in it when you're bagging fish, and more importantly, the two most common size nets that I use are the five inch and the six inch aquarium net and both of these nets happen to fit very nicely all the way into the bottom of this specimen container from Aquarium Co-op. So it's got a slightly larger volume and it's easy to get your net in and out of, which is what I like. The last feature that I'm really in love with with this product 
is the fact that it doesn't have the pore spouts on them. Now, when you're looking at this, you might think, oh, that's really convenient. It makes pouring really easy. Well, not really, because whenever you're pouring fish in and out of a container like this, uh, usually you're pouring so fast that um, you're pouring out of the corner, but you're also pouring out of the middle spout. And so then the water has two streams and it makes a giant mess. Um, I've never successfully poured using the little pour spout on these Tom's dip and pours. So I'm really excited to see how this works. We're gonna use these today. We're gonna photograph the fish uh, while they're in these containers and we use this to move those fish outdoors. So let's get catching. Right, here are the Vietnamese white cloud mountain minnows that we've caught. Um, <laughs> now I know why they're uh, they're on the cares list. <laughs> it's because they're so easy to catch. I don't understand how these survive in the wild. Uh, I think I, I didn't miss a single fish uh, when I was netting them. And uh, yeah, they just went straight in the net. But anyways, uh, it's good to be able to inspect them in the specimen container before I bring them outdoors in case there are any fish um, that are showing signs of uh, illness or disease um, or just don't look like they're in great breeding condition, uh, I can exclude those from uh, my next generation of uh, breeding. And so uh, using a specimen container like this is a great way to do that. So we're gonna take a look at these fish and uh, then we're gonna move on to the next.
right, taking a quick look at the rainbow shiners. Uh, definitely a much harder fish to catch, especially if it sees the net coming. Uh, they're pretty quick, but if you can get the net underneath them, uh, usually it's not too bad. But as you can see, we've got about two dozen full-size adults here. A good mix of uh, males and females. They're a little colored down now because uh, I just stressed them way out, but you can see the uh, few females in there that look like they're ready to drop eggs any minute. So I'll probably get some, some eggs uh, tomorrow morning. Uh, so super excited about that. Hopefully I see tons of babies out there in the IBC tote uh, relatively shortly, but let's keep catching. Boom, check these guys out. The golden white clouds look absolutely beautiful. Now, if you've tried small pond fish in the past, like rice fish, uh, and you didn't have much luck, uh, I would definitely recommend these, the golden white clouds. They're super hardy. They look just as beautiful from the top down, and uh, I can't wait to work with them. So. As you saw, uh, it was pretty easy to net them. However, I also have endlers, live bearers in this tank. So every net had 10 endlers in it. Um, so it was easier to just net the fish uh, and then hand collect each one of them and drop them in the dip and pour here. So let's keep catching.
All right, and the regular white clouds. Boy, that's uh, a few more than I thought I had in there. Um, that's probably close to four dozen fish, and there's maybe a dozen more still in the tank that I couldn't catch. Uh, they just they caught on to what I was up to, and uh, they started hiding on me. But uh, as you saw, I was able to corral them with my hand and then just scoop them in the net pretty easily. Um, so these ones look nice, big, fat, healthy, and they are going out in the last IBC tote. Uh, it's nice having the extra size to the uh, specimen container. It allows you to catch a lot of fish, as you can see, um, and uh, not run out of oxygen. So let's move them over to a bucket and we'll go acclimate. Alright guys, and welcome to my greenhouse 2023. Now I think I've shot one or two videos where you've seen the IBC totes, those are new as of last year, and the Laguna tubs have been here for uh, quite a while. But we've got our fish out here, they are acclimating. This is one of my favorite acclimation methods, and uh, essentially it's just a bucket tower. So we've got our four species of fish down below, and the buckets were only about a third full uh, to start. And then we've got one additional bucket up top, and this has the water from uh, the greenhouse in it. And uh, we just started a siphon uh, hose, airline hose, into each one of those. And so uh, this is a foolproof way to acclimate fish and walk away, and, uh, and they'll be perfectly fine. Uh, none of the buckets will overflow because we've got five gallons that's being distributed into 20 uh, cumulative gallons of buckets. So these buckets should end about half full. And so uh, you can walk away from this, come back five, ten minutes later, and uh, they should be acclimated. Now, I don't have a whole lot to acclimate here. Uh, as you can see, there is a little bit of tint to the water. There are some tannins in there, so the pH is definitely a little bit lower out here because we're dealing with a pond that has a lot of leaves in it and uh, the temperature is a few degrees different I don't think they really care about that but we're acclimating them anyways so we're gonna let this go for a few minutes here while we talk about the greenhouse real quick so greenhouse this is the IBC side we've got four of the 275 gallon IBC totes installed on the right wall of this greenhouse and they're plumbed in to my 1,000 gallon in-ground goldfish pond uh, that's outside and so um, one of these PVC lines comes in and drips water into all four of these IBC totes and then they all overflow here down over to the floor and then out the greenhouse back into the pond outdoors and similarly over here we have the same thing we've got six uh, inlets dripping water from the the outdoor pond into these 60 gallon laguna tubs and then we've got the overflows down here and then that's overflowing to the exact same spot uh, down on the floor down behind and so these IBC totes are where these fish are going to go. We're gonna put the white clouds and the rainbow shiners, one species, in each one of these totes. Now, about a month, month and a half ago, I put these hanging bags of leaves in these IBC totes. 
with the intention of allowing them to slowly rot and decompose because I wanted to get the largest culture of infusoria going that I possibly could in these totes before I introduced any of these fish. And so leaves naturally decompose, they naturally decay when uh, they're in a, a stream or a river or a pond. And that's what is giving the water this tint color. And it's also slowly breaking down and it's feeding um, the infusoria that are in the water column. So it's just completely filled with paramecium. Uh, and that's how I was so successful with my white clouds last year. It was a little bit of an experiment, but I put six of these guys in one of the IBC totes and I ended up with over 500 fish uh, at the end of the season. And I was just completely dumbfounded uh, how well it worked. And so uh, I just put the fish straight into the IBC tote and I allowed them to breed. And I didn't even cover the overflow. You can see there's an overflow here with a little bit of a screen to it. So adult fish can't get through, but baby fish certainly could get swept through uh, out into the goldfish pond and never be seen again. But look at this. This is a 275 gallon water volume and we're only dripping in, this is like just a few gallons per minute of flow. And so you figure that amount of flow is equal to the amount that's overflowing out the screen. So it's not a lot in comparison to the total water volume of this IBC tote. And that's what's important because all of the water down below, there's no current that's like sucking all those little baby fry out the top. The baby fry would literally need to be swimming right next to this in order to get sucked through. I'm sure that happens, but not nearly as much as you would think. And so larger water volume allows a more stable uh, environment for those fry to thrive. Also last year, I didn't have these baskets. I just had the, the adult fish swimming around in the IBC tote with the baby fish. And normally what that means is the baby fish all get eaten. Um, that's what usually happens in your aquariums and that's usually why you don't see any fry uh, from species like white clouds or other egg scattering fish. Every morning when the lights come on, they're laying eggs. Whether you see it or not, they're doing it. Uh, but you usually don't see the fry because they're getting eaten um, before they get a chance to, to grow up. And so um, last year, I was able to, to successfully raise so many because again, this is sort of a dark, murky environment. Um, and so it's more difficult for those adult fish to hunt down those fry. And I'm going one step further this year with these baskets, these floating baskets, spawning baskets and I'm going to put the adult fish in these spawning baskets and then the rest of this IBC tote is home for the fry. So whether it's the white clouds or the rainbow shiners, uh, they're both egg scattering fish. They like gravel bottoms, uh, sandy gravel bottoms and uh, that's what they're used to spawning over. So I'm going to put one little clump of java moss in there and uh, the, the whole bottom there is uh, made out of stone. And every morning they're going to lay eggs and those eggs are gonna fall through that layer of stone uh, out into the larger IBC tote, which is just totally full of infusoria at this point. So that is the second part to why this is going to be so successful is because there is a live food source that is just totally filling the water column out here in the pond. So we're creating a natural environment to feed those baby fish, which means I don't have to see the baby fish and I don't need to feed the baby fish in order to successfully breed and raise the baby fish, which is super, super critical because you're never going to find them all and you're never going to catch them all. Um, it's best to just give them the environment in which to thrive all on their own.
So anyways, that's the plan. We've uh, acclimated five gallons worth of water here. I might actually fill this back up one more time and do another five gallons. And uh, then we'll go ahead and deposit these fish in their new summer home. All right, and here we are with our fish successfully added to their new summer home. Now, these are the regular white clouds. There's actually quite a few in here, a little bit more than I thought I was going to have. So I may actually end up putting them in two baskets within this IBC tote. So those are the regular white clouds. Then over here, We've got the golden white clouds, and you can definitely tell the difference, especially from up above here, with the coloration. They look great. And uh, I still need to put a little bit of java moss in there, hopefully make them feel a little bit more comfortable. And uh, hopefully we'll start getting eggs soon. Over here, we've got our rainbow shiners. You can see those breeding colors from here, for sure. Sorry about the reflection. We'll get some better uh, video footage a little bit later once they've all settled in, but uh, I bet they'll be breeding here tomorrow morning, for sure. And then last, over here, we have the Vietnamese white clouds. A little bit smaller than the normal white clouds. A little bit harder to see, but they're in there swimming around. I think they're really going to enjoy this. I think this is a great setup for them, and I'm hoping my goal is to get a thousand babies out of each one of these IBC totes this summer. That's my goal. I've got about three months of good working weather out here for these species before I need to move them back indoors. So crossing our fingers and hoping it works out and we get tons and tons of fry. Again, thank you to Aquarium Co-op for providing the specimen container that we used in this video. Again, if you want to check these out and buy them, there's a link down in the description down below. You can go to AquariumCoop.com. Anyways, guys, we'll do plenty more videos out in the greenhouse this summer and into the early fall so stay tuned until then hope you guys enjoyed and i'll see you guys later all right i hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did please give it a like please subscribe but also please check out nature forged aquatics on amazon you can check out products like this the nature forged aquatics alder cones which is a great product to add to your black water tanks, to your shrimp tanks, to your soft water aquariums. It provides natural tannins, allows you to naturally and slowly drop the pH in your aquariums. It's a great product. This is a four ounce bag. It has tons of cones in it. It will last you a very long time. It also helps support this channel because Nature Forged Aquatics is my brand. So hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys later.